Here's part two of our IoT adventure quest. In the last episode, our brave and super cute adventurers obtained a magic wand. Now they're setting off to defeat the dragon and obtain the treasure. What was that? Uh, uh. Hey! I see you, thief! You think you can take my treasure? Taste my flames! Oh! Yes! Yes! Congratulations! You have defeated the dragon! You can now claim his treasure if you can open the chest. Well, my little adventurers definitely rolled an 18 on cuteness. Putting together the dragon was a lot of fun. I bought this design, had my good friend Blue Man Suit cut it out on his CNC router, painted all the parts, and put it together. And I'm a little biased here, but I gotta say, he looks good. Now the insides of the dragon, the parts that make him fun, consisted of these things. A D1 Mini, a PIR or motion sensor, some RGB LEDs, two reed switches. And I'm running the whole thing off the same power supply that I'm using for the wand box. They'll be close enough together that I can do that. Just like I did with the wand box, I'm gonna use Tasmoda on this D1 Mini. Since I did it in the last video, I'm not gonna repeat it. But the process for getting Tasmoda on the D1 Mini is pretty simple. You can check it out there. And just like I did with the wand box, I put together a backlog command so that with one line in the Tasmoda console or in Termite, you can set up everything that you need for Tasmoda. Just remember, it still needs your Wi-Fi SSID and password and your MQTT broker information. This here diagram shows how all our Dragon parts are connected. We're using the same power supply. So the gray wire shows that all the grounds are connected. The LEDs need power directly from the power supply. That's this bottom yellow wire. And they also need a data connection, which is the green wire that goes from D8 on the D1 mini to the data pin on the LED strip. This big white box in the corner is the PIR or motion sensor. It's got a ground wire, a three volt wire, which is going to the three volt pin on the D1 mini, and an output wire, that's the yellow wire, that goes to D2 on the D1 mini. Then we have our two magnetic sensors, or reed switches. One side of each goes to ground, and then the purple wire is connected to D4, and the blue wire is connected to D5. Again, I'm powering this D1 Mini from a USB cable, mostly out of convenience. I could just as easily put power to the 5 volt pin on the D1 Mini. And that's it, all wired up and ready to go. After running the backlog command, when you open up the Tasmoda main page, it'll look like this. If you go to configuration, and then configure module, you can see how each GPIO pin is being assigned. For consistency, I put my LED lights on D8. Switch one, which is the PIR sensor, is on D2. Switch two is one of the read switches, it's on D5. And switch three is the other read switch that's on D4. Then remember, in Tasmoda, for each switch that you assign, you need to also assign a relay. So even though I don't have any relays connected, I have three pins here that are assigned as relays, one, two, and three. And that's it. Now on to the most important part, which is the automations. First, there's two things you need to add to the configuration.yaml file that I didn't include when I did the wand box video. That's these last two input booleans, one for the fire spell and one for the ice spell. Just like the other input booleans, I had to add these in order to keep the quest sequential so that the right things happened in the right order. You'll see what I mean when we look at the automations. Right now. This is the automation that says once they've heated the sensor past 80 degrees, the box will unlock, the lights will turn red, the fire spell audio file will play, and then it will turn on two input booleans. One that says the wand has been obtained, and the other one that says they used the fire spell to get it. And the next automation is the ice spell, which is the same except they have to cool the temperature sensor 
And then again to the last action, I added the activation of the ice spell input boolean. The next automation is the one that says, if the temperature's not hot enough or not cold enough, the spell isn't gonna work. At the end of this automation, I turned off the input boolean for the fire spell or the ice spell. This next automation is the first one that deals specifically with the dragon. And I didn't talk about it in the last video. This is the sneak warning automation. When the binary sensor called sleeping dragon is activated, meaning they've been seen by the PIR or motion sensor. But there are a couple of conditions that have to be met in order for this automation to reach the action phase. The first is that the input Boolean for the sneak warning has to be off meaning this automation hasn't run already. The other condition is that they have to have obtained the wand. So the input Boolean for the wand obtained has to be on. If all three of those things happen, motion is detected, it hasn't been detected before, and they have obtained the wand, then we can get to the action. In this case, the action is to turn the dragon eyes yellow, to play the sneak warning sound clip, and then finally, to turn on the sneak warning input boolean. Now remember, at the top of this automation, we had to have the sneak warning input boolean off for this automation to happen. Then at the end of the automation, I turn that same input boolean on. That's how I make sure that this automation only runs once. That's part of the complexity of writing automations in YAML. We had a nice chat on the last live stream about automations in YAML versus Node-RED and why one might be better or easier than the other. This is part of the tough part with YAML. The progression of these automations in YAML doesn't always make sense. At least that's the way it is for me. So our adventurers have activated the motion sensor and they've woken the dragon, but he went back to sleep. That's the sneak warning. The next phase is the sneak caught, meaning he's gonna catch him this time. Once again, the trigger for this automation is the activation of the motion sensor. And just like the last one, there are some specific conditions that have to be met. The three conditions that have to be met for this automation to continue are, number one, the sneak warning input boolean has to be on, meaning they've already been warned once. Remember, we turned that input boolean on at the end of the last automation. Number two, they have to have obtained the wand. That makes sense. And number three, the sneak caught input boolean has to be off, meaning they haven't already activated this automation. That works similar to the way we did it in the sneak warning automation. At the end of this one, we'll be turning that input boolean to on so that this automation won't run twice. If all those conditions are met, then the action will be activated. For this one, the action is turn the dragon eyes red, play the sneak caught sound file, and turn the sneak caught input boolean on. Now, if I had more time, I'd like to add something mechanical to this. Maybe blow some smoke on the players or make the dragon move or something fun like that. But for now, to get this done in time for the Maker Fair, I'm gonna stop here. But watch out, because someday I will put some actions with physically moving things in some of these fun quest automations. Oh yeah, it's coming. So the dragon is just going to be threatening the players, kind of roaring at them. Hopefully, at that point, they'll hurry up and try and kill him. To kill him, they need to touch the wand, which has a magnet on the tip, to the reed switch that's behind whichever symbol corresponds to the spell that they used to get the wand. So there's a flame symbol, and there's a snowflake symbol. This next automation, the ice attack automation, is what happens when they touch the wand to the ice spell sensor, which is located behind the snowflake. So the trigger for this automation is that sensor, the ice spell sensor, going from off to on. And the conditions that have to be met are, number one, that they haven't already killed the dragon, which is the dragon down input boolean being set to off. And two, that the temperature sensor has to still be below the threshold which in this case is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Not really ice, but close enough. If those two things are true, then we start the action. If you're really paying close attention, you'll see that I had an audio file that I was calling that I didn't need to call. So I just took that out. That's an Easter egg. So now 
They've activated the ice attack by poking the dragon in the ice symbol, which is the snowflake. They've met the conditions of not having already defeated the dragon and of having a temperature on the sensor below 70 degrees. Now the action happens. The first thing we do is send a message to the dragon eye lights to play a scene, which is a preset LED effect in Tasmoda. In this case, I'm just calling scheme number four. It just makes the eyes kind of glow in and out of a variety of different colors. Kind of cool. Then we play the dragon down audio file, kind of his death throes. Oh. And we congratulate the players and tell them they get to move on to the next step, which is trying to open the chest. And finally, we turn on the dragon down input boolean. And again, I do that so that this automation will only run once. What I found was those read switches are really sensitive. And if the players move the magnet on the tip of the wand close to the read switch and away from it and close to it again, it would reactivate this automation and you'd get the dragon repeating his audio file over and over and over. So to stop that, put in these input booleans so the automations only run once. There's probably other ways to do that, but this way works. I really think Node Red would be a better way to do these automations, but for now, I've got to stick with what I'm familiar with. And that's the automations in YAML. But I'm learning how to do them in Node Red, and hopefully before too long, I'll be just as familiar with this as I am with the YAML. And then making a lot of this cool stuff happen will be that much easier. This last automation, the fire attack, is a repeat of the ice attack. The only difference is that the temperature has to be above 80 degrees instead of below 70. Otherwise, everything else is the same. So there you go. Save your automations file, save your config file, run your config checker in Home Assistant, and then restart. My purpose for making this was to have something to show at the Maker Faire that would highlight what we can do in the DIY home automation world and also to put a new twist on it to make it fun and interactive. But I think I stumbled onto something that's gonna be a lot of fun at home too. Well, that's all for now. Remember, if you need help, Discord's the best place to go. And if you haven't joined us on one of the live streams yet, that's a lot of fun too. I try and do it every Sunday, but I alternate the time so that people in different parts of the world can participate without having to be up at three o'clock in the morning. If you wanna know when the next live stream's happening, Make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so it'll send you a notification anytime there's a new video or a live stream. Here's all the important links. Big thanks to everybody who's been helping me to learn. And thanks for supporting what I'm doing by using these affiliated links. And especially thanks to everybody who's been supporting me on Patreon. That's super cool. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.